Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the organization ceremony of the 218th session of the New Jersey General Assembly. I am Assemblywoman Pamela Lampett from the 6th District. Thank you all for coming, and a special, special welcome to the family and friends of all of the newly elected officials who will be sworn in today. It is truly a special day, so enjoy each and every moment. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Colonel D. Kelly Pipes and Drums and the members of the 218th General Assembly. We'd like to thank the Pipe Band. Give them another round of applause, please. I, yeah, yeah. We're just going to wait for the members to take their seat. You can all be seated. Just be another few more minutes. I don't know about you, but I was really happy to see 40 degrees on the thermometer today. Do we get an applause for that?
my seat for a little bit. I'm happy to share. Oh, I think you can. <laughs> this being the time fixed for the beginning of the legislative session, the General Assembly of the State of New Jersey is now called to order to affect the organization of the conduct of its business for the first annual session of the 218th session. The Certificate of Election. I, Dennis Robinson, Chief of Staff to the Lieutenant Governor, Secretary of State, designated to act out on her behalf, do hereby certify that an election held on the seventh day of November 2017, the following persons were elected members of the General Assembly to represent the state of New Jersey in the 218th legislature. Legislative districts, first district, Bob Andrzak and R. Bruce Land. Second District, Vince Mazio, John Amato. Third District, John J. Berzicelli, Adam Telefero. Fourth District, Paul D. Moriarty and Gabriella M. Mascara. Fifth District, Patricia Egan Jones and Arthur Barkley. Sixth District, Louis D. Greenwald, Pamela R. Lampett. Seventh District, Herb Conaway, Carol Murphy. Eighth District, Joe Haworth, Ryan Peters. Ninth District, Brian E. Rumpf and Diane C. Gov. Tenth District, David Wolf and Gregory P. McGuckin. Eleventh District, Eric Houtelin and Joanne Downey. Twelfth District, Ronald S. Dancer, Robert D. Clifton. Thirteenth District, Amy Hanlon and Serena Damaso. 14th District, Wayne P. D'Angelo, Daniel R. Benson. 15th District, Reed Gossiora, Elizabeth Mayer Moyo. 16th District, Andrew Zwicker, Roy Freeman. 7th District, Joseph V. Egan and Joe Danielson. 18th District, Nancy J. Pinkin, Robert J. Karabenchek. 19th District, Craig J. Coughlin, Yvonne Lopez. 20th District, Annette Keanu, James, Jamal C. Hawley. 21st District, John Bramnick, Nancy F. Munoz. 22nd District, Jerry Green, James J. Kennedy. 23rd District, John DeMeo, Eric Peterson. 24th District, F. Parker Space, Harold J. Worse. 25th District, Anthony B. Bucco, Michael Patrick Carroll. 26th District, Jay Weber, Betty Lou DeCroach. 27th District, John F. McKeon, Myla M. Jay 28th District, Cleopatra G. Tucker, Ralph R. Caputo. 29th District, Eliana Pintoa Maran and Shanique Spate. 30th District, Sean T. Kame. Edward H. Thompson III, 31st District, Nicholas Chivarelli, Angela V. McKnight, 32nd District, Vincent Prieto, Angelica M. Jimenez, 33rd District, Raj Mukherjee, Annette Shaparo, 34th District, Thomas P. Giblin, Sheila Oliver, 35th District, Shavonda E. Sumter, Benji E. Wimberly. 36th District, Marlene Caridi and Gary Scher. 37th District, Gordon M. Johnson, Valerie Veneri Huddle. 38th District, Tim Eustace, Joseph A. Lagana. 39th District, Robert Orth, Holly Shapizi. And 40th District, Kevin J. Rooney and Christopher P. DePhillips. Congratulations. Let us now welcome Deacon Kevin Reyna from St. Teresa of Avil Roman Catholic Church in Summit to deliver the invocation. Please rise to join the Pastor Kennedy and please remain standing. <clears throat> Let us pray. Good and gracious God, as we gather this day, we recognize your presence among us and humbly ask for your blessing. Pour forth a special portion of your spirit on all of us gathered, 
but in a particular way upon our newly elected assembly members. Enlighten them with your wisdom and understanding. Strengthen them with right judgment and courage. May they always do justice and love kindness and walk humbly with you, our God. Be gracious to us, God, and bless us, and make your face shine upon us. Lord, may the work of this newly elected legislative body find favor with you. May everything we do begin with your inspiration and continue with your saving help. Let our work always find its origin in you and through you reach completion. We ask these prayers and all our prayers in the name of the Lord of heaven and earth. Amen. This past week, New Jersey has lost one of its most dedicated elected officials, Governor Brendan Burns. Please take a moment, bow your heads in memory of Brendan Burns. Thank you. The New Jersey Color Guard State Police will now present the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome recipient of the Unsung Hero Award, the Jimmy V Award for Perseverance, and the 2012 Star Ledger Most Influential Person in New Jersey Sports Award, Avenal, Avenal resident and former Rutgers defensive tackle star Eric Legrand to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, could you please remain standing for our national anthem performed by Arlette Roxborough. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the rain hearts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? Just beautiful. Just beautiful. Another round of applause for Eric and Arlette. You can all be seated. The oath of office 
will now be administered to the newly elected mem members of the New Jersey Assembly. We're going to start off with District 1. District 2, I apologize, Assemblyman John Armardo, please come forward and his family. There's a script right here. <laughs> John, you want to place your right hand on the Bible and repeat after me. Uh, put your hand on the Bible. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And to the governments established. And the governments established in the United States. In the United States and in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully. That I will faithfully discharge. Discharge the duty. The duties of member of the General Assembly, of member of the General Assembly, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Assemblyman. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Anybody want to go steady with them? <laughs> Get to pin him. He's getting pinned if you can't see. <laughs> I think I think they're going steady. <laughs> Congratulations. Next, we will have Assemblywoman Carol Murphy from the 7th District. Ah, the mics aren't picking you up. Oh. Can you hear me now? <laughs> I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And to the governments established. And to the governments established in the United States. In the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of member of the General Assembly. Duties of the member of the General Assembly. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Amen. Assembly. <laughs> Congratulations, Carol Murphy, Assemblywoman. Next. My new minority leader, Bramnick. We're going to have Assemblyman Ryan Peters from District 8. Ryan Peters. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith. And that I will bear true faith. And allegiance to same. And allegiance to same. And to the governments established. And to the governments established. In the United States and in this state. In the United States and in this state. Under the authority of the people under the authority of the people and that I will faithfully discharge and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the duties of member of the general assembly member of the general assembly according to the best of my ability according to the best of my ability so help me god so help me god congratulations assembly Congratulations, Assemblyman Peters. Next, 
we will have Assemblywoman Serena Damaso from District 13. I see why you I think she brought her whole town. I state your name. I, Serena DeMasso. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith. And that I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. And to the governments established. And to the governments established. In the United States. In the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I I will faithfully discharge the duties of the duties of member of the general assembly member of the general assembly according to the best of my ability according to the best of my abilities so help me god so help me god congratulations <laughs> assembly. yeah i'm not good at reading <laughs> we don't allow john pins any sharp objects <laughs> Go ahead. I'm used to doing things myself. I can't help it. <laughs> the way it is. I like her already. <laughs> Congratulations, Assemblywoman DeMasso. Next, we'll have Assemblyman Roy Freeman from District 16. I do solemnly swear. I think I'm supposed to do it the other way. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think come around here. Wait a minute. Hang on. Got it. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And to the governments established. And the governments established in the United States. In the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of of member of the General Assembly, a, a member of the General Assembly, according to the best of my abilities, according to the best of my abilities. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations, <laughs> Assemblyman Freeman. <laughs> Next, we'll have Assemblywoman Yvonne Lopez from District 19. <laughs> she brought all of her town. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Guys have. I'm going to go on this side. Okay. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the New State of New Jersey. And that I will bear. And I will bear true faith and allegiance. True faith and allegiance to the same. To the same. And to the governments established. And to the governments established in the United States. In the United States. And in this state. In this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully. And I will faithfully discharge. The duties, discharge the duties of member of the General Assembly, of member of the General Assembly, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations.
congratulations, Thank you. Assemblywoman Lopez. <laughs> Next, we will have Assemblyman Harold Worth from District 24. I state your name. I, Harold Wirtz. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance. To same. To same. And to the governments established in the United States. And to the governments established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of. The duties of. Member of the General Assembly. Member of the General Assembly. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. He means it. <laughs> Congratulations, Assemblyman Worth. Assemblywoman Shanique Spite from District 29. Boy, do I feel short. <laughs> I know, I am. Ready? Yes. Okay. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith. And I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. And to the governments established. And to the governments established. In the United States. In the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully. And I will faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of member of the General Assembly. Of member of the General Assembly. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. So help me God. So help me God. <laughs> You remember the prom, right? You had to put the on. <laughs> Congratulations, Assemblywoman Spade. <laughs> and from District 40, Assemblyman Christopher DePhillips. I state your name. I, Christopher DePhillips. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance. And I will bear true faith and allegiance. To same. To same. And to the governments established in the United States. And to the governments established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge. The duties of. The duties of. Member of the General Assembly. Member of the General Assembly. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> Members, please rise to take the oath of, of office for the New Jersey Assembly General Assembly. Everyone, please raise your hand. I do solemnly swear, I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that it will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. 
and to the governments established, and to the governments established in the United States, in the United States and, in this state, and in this state under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of member of the General Assembly according to the best of my ability. So help me God. Congratulations, everyone. We're a really friendly group. <coughs> wow. Nominations are now in order for the temporary chair. I recognize the assemblywoman from Mercer County, Assemblyman Reed Gusiora. I nominate Assemblywoman Sumter of Passaic County. Assemblyman Barkley, why do you rise? I rise to second the motion. If there are no more nominations, the chair will entertain a motion that nominations be closed. Assemblyman Eustace? Hearing no objections, so ordered. All those in favor of the nomination of Assemblywoman Sumter as temporary chairwoman, signifying by saying aye. Aye. Those say nay. Good. The ayes have it. Congratulations, <laughs> Assemblywoman Sumter. Thank you, members. Resolution on the clerk's death. General Assembly 2018 Organizational Resolution. Assemblywoman Kihano, why do you rise? I move to waive the reading by the clerk. Copies of the Assembly Organizational Resolution have been distributed to the members. Hearing no objections, all those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes have it, the motion is passed. Assemblywoman J.C., why do you rise? I rise to move the resolution. Assemblyman Zwicker, why do you rise? I rise to second the motion. On the resolution, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. <laughs> She's new. <laughs> the ayes have it. <laughs> ah. The resolution passes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nominations are now in order for the Clerk of the Assembly. I recognize Assemblywoman Veneri Huddle from Bergen County. I nominate Dana M. Burley of Camden County to serve as Clerk of the New Jersey General Assembly for the 218th session. Assemblyman Karabinchek, why do you rise? I rise to second the motion. If there are no other nominations, the chair will entertain a motion that nominations be closed. Assemblywoman Tucker. Hearing no objections, so ordered on the election of Dana M. Burley to serve as the clerk of the New Jersey General Assembly. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. <laughs> Assemblywoman Downey will administer the oath of office to the clerk of the New Jersey General Assembly to Dana M. Burley. And I just want to say congratulations to all of my colleagues here and thank you to all the family and friends here to support and thank you to Dana for all that you do. I'm so thank proud you. to have to be one to swear. You're very blessed to be here. <laughs> Try not to cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I do solemnly promise. I do solemnly promise and swear and swear that I will faithfully that I will faithfully impartially impartially and justly and justly perform all of the duties perform all the duties of the office of clerk of the office of clerk to the best of my ability to the best of my ability and understanding and understanding that I will carefully that I will carefully preserve all records preserve all records papers papers writings writings or property 
or property entrusted to me entrusted to me for safekeeping for safekeeping by virtue of my office by virtue of my office and make such disposition and make such disposition of the same of the same as may be required as may be required by law by law congratulations thank you, thank you. Nominations for Speaker Pro Tem of the Assembly are now in order. I recognize Assemblyman Kennedy from Union County. I rise to nominate Gerald Green of Union County. Assemblyman Wimberly, why do you rise? I rise and second the motion. If there are no other nominations, that the chair will entertain a motion that nominations be closed. Assemblywoman Mascara. I move that nominations for Speaker Pro Tem be closed. Hearing no objection, so ordered on the election of Gerald Green to serve as Speaker Pro Tem of the New Jersey General Assembly. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Assemblyman Coughlin will now administer the oath of office to Assembly Minor Majority Leader Lewis Greenwald of Camden County. Okay. No. 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 Okay. Um, thank you, everyone. Assemblyman Green was not able to be here today, but uh, we wish him all the best as he's uh, recovering from uh, a leg injury, and he sends his best regards to everyone. Uh, so, Jerry, we we miss you, and we'll see you soon. Um, And now it's my privilege to uh, administer the oath to Assembly Majority Leader Lou Greenwald. I do solemnly promise. I do solemnly promise. And swear. And swear. That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And justly perform. And justly perform. All the duties. All the duties. Of the office of majority leader. Of the office of majority leader. Of the New Jersey General Assembly. Of the New Jersey General Assembly. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. And understanding. And understanding. That I will carefully. That I will carefully. Preserve all records. Preserve all records. Papers. Papers. Writings. Writings. Or other property entrusted to me or other properties entrusted to me for safekeeping for safekeeping by virtue of my office by virtue of my office and make such dis disposition and make such disposition of the same of the same as may be required by law as may be required by law that I will support the constitution that I will support the constitution of the United States of the United States and the constitution of the state of New Jersey and the constitution of the state of New Jersey and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to the governments established and to the governments established in the United States, in the United States, and in this state, and in this state, under the authority of the people, under the authority of the people. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. I want to thank everyone so much for this remarkable opportunity and privilege. I first want to thank my beautiful family for their support and their patience. And for any of us who do this, and for many of you in the audience who have participated in public life, you know that the 
The greatest commitment and the greatest sacrifice is by our families, and they truly deserve the greatest applause. <laughs> my greatest pride and joy, and I know for my wife and I, is watching our three children and watching them grow. It's been a remarkable gift to us. They have been a political family through no choice of their own. Uh, I was elected in 1995, and my oldest daughter was, was born in 1998. My twins were born in 2000. They have experienced their entire life this remarkable gift that we call democracy, and I'm very proud of them and very proud that they've had a chance to watch this. So. Being elected majority leader is, uh, is a remarkable honor, but the greatest title that I have is husband and father. My children are a constant reminder of the work that we must do, and I thank you for keeping me humble and keeping me motivated to work every day to make New Jersey a better place for you and for children like you. Today I step to this podium for my 12th term in this great house, the People's House, and my fourth term as the Assembly Majority Leader. I remember the values that we have fought for, real tax relief for the middle class, rebuilding an economy mired in a recession, common sense, gun safety, meaningful equality for all residents, and a better future for all of us who call New Jersey home. I remember the victories, the lives that were improved, the jobs that were created, the communities made safer, and the slow but steady progress towards equal justice for all done in a bipartisan effort with people on the stage and people who've served before. But I do not step to this podium today to dwell in memory, but instead to keep our eyes in the past would be a grievous mistake. Because today we find ourselves in a difficult moment in history, perhaps more difficult than any that we have faced in decades or in the last century. Today, across our nation, we face a reactionary cynicism and a rising hatred and intolerance. There are those who seek to pit one against the other, whether it be based on the color of our skin, our religion, our immigration status, our socioeconomic background, our sex, or our gender identity. I have always believed in using the power of the spoken word to lift people up. The words, I believe, are powerful tools. There are those who believe that shared social media posts are more important than our shared values, and that the power of those words are lost in a 140-character tweet. Think for a moment of these words from Robert F. Kennedy. There are those that look at things the way they are and ask why. I dream of things that never were and ask why not. Ladies and gentlemen, patriotism is not a contest to see who can yell the loudest or land the best soundbite. There are those who see the path to the future ahead and want to reverse course to undo the progress that we have made here in New Jersey. Let us dream big, and let us challenge ourselves to ask why not. Here in New Jersey, I say to you today, we are not going to go backwards. We will not take a single, a single step back. Our future and the dreams of our children lie ahead of us. In New Jersey, we will continue to move forward, no matter the difficulty of the path before us or the challenges that we face. When I say there are those that would like to take us back, this is not some abstract idea. Just weeks ago, Washington passed a tax bill. National financial experts say that New Jersey will be the hardest hit state in our country. Out of a 12-member congressional delegation made up equally of Republicans and Democrats, only one member thought this bill was a good idea for New Jersey. We know from studies that it will devastate New Jersey's middle class and working families. We know that it will put affordable health care out of the reach for millions across this country. We know it will exasperate our state's unfair and unconscionable property tax burden. The reports are unanimous. The biggest benefit will go to the smallest few, while at the same time evidence shows that it will stagnate New Jersey's economy. We know it will strain the ability of thousands of New Jerseyans to make ends meet. These families who will be affected, they don't care about partisan blame games. They are making decisions. How will I put food on my table? How will I pay my property taxes? How will I give my children an opportunity that they deserve? And when they are sick and suffering, how will I make them better? In a very real sense, the tax cuts from Washington, while intended to create prosperity, in very, very 
well may for 45 out of our 50 states. While the jury remains undecided, in New Jersey, we know it creates a crisis. I believe that this crisis, once and for all, presents New Jersey with an opportunity. The fact that our highest in the nation property tax system must be overhauled is lost on no one in this room who has served in government. In 1977, when my mother, Maria Barnaby Greenwald, was elected the first woman to serve as mayor of Cherry Hill, her inauguration speech that day focused on the fear of her parents and her in-laws being unable to stay and live near their grandchildren because of the crushing burden of property taxes. That was 1977. It is 2017. We continue to have the same debate. This system is a decades-old problem that stifles our ability to compete with neighboring states. We know this system has formed the root of so many of our state's other economic and public policy challenges. For those of us on this dais who have served for years, we have made public policy decision after public policy decision that was intended to mitigate the impact of property taxes only to ultimately pay more for the same services that we had years ago with less quality and less outcomes. The time for meaningful property tax reform in New Jersey is long overdue. And as we enter this legislative session with new leadership and a new governor, we must have the tough conversations about how we move forward New Jersey together in a bipartisan fashion. We need tax reform that encourages investment in our communities, tax reform that makes New Jersey an affordable place to raise a family, tax reform that makes New Jersey a desirable place for our seniors to retire and live, tax reform that empowers our younger residents and sets them on a path to succeed, tax reform that helps those who need it the most, the middle class, working families, the backbone of our state. In this challenging moment, New Jerseyans must lead the way, not Democrats or Republicans, but a bipartisan effort on this issue and so many others. My oldest daughter, Lauren, just completed the first semester of her sophomore year at college. She dreams to move back to New Jersey after graduation. But as her father, I worry whether or not she will be able to live on her own. Like so many of the millennial generation, nationally one third of every one of that generation live at home with their mother and father. In New Jersey, it is 47%. In 2016, my daughter voted for the first time. She would tell you that election did not go the way that she wanted. But she voted, and she fell in love with democracy, and she found her way. She chose a career, and she chooses to pursue a career in law and to advocate for public policy, for change so that her generation will have the opportunities that our generation were so benefited by. In recent years, we have seen so many states enact laws that restrict that voting right that is so cherished and that she experienced and fell in love with democracy because of. Make no mistake, these voter suppression laws are discriminatory, un-American, and wrong. Far too often, our nation has tolerated a creeping attack on this most hallowed, hallowed and cherished right. Yet here in New Jersey, we led the way with an unprecedented effort to expand voting rights via the Democracy Act. Unfortunately, that legislation was vetoed. But this issue is too important to just give up. Voting rights, voting rights are the cornerstone of our democracy one which many Americans have quite literally sacrificed their lives to protect. This is a time more than ever that citizens need to feel connected to their government, that they can affect change. Even when their candidate loses, they must feel that their vote counts. New Jersey must continue to lead the way in protecting voting rights and expanding the opportunity of its people to vote through common sense ideas that modernize our outdated laws, like early voting, automatic voter registration, same day registration, the beauty of our democracy is that all votes are equal. One person, one vote. You can clap for that, that's okay. <laughs> Speaking of equality, I was also blessed to have twins. My son Eric and my daughter Jenna. Crying because it was the scariest day of our life. But in five and a half years, they will graduate from college. Their future should be based on their abilities and their skills, their work ethic, not their gender. When I dream of their future, 
I do not see a statistic or a number. Unfortunately, over the last decade, we have seen mountains of data showing a disturbing truth. It is a travesty that in 2018, women will still receive less compensation than men for equal work. Here in New Jersey, a white woman makes 80 cents for every dollar that her male counterpart earns. African-American women make 58 cents for every dollar, and Latino women make just 43 cents to every dollar. Yet we have led the way in efforts to try to close this wage gap. We passed historic pay equity legislation that was not signed into law. Some of our efforts, like bringing transparency to whether public contractors provide equal work for equal pay, were vetoed. But as I stand here today as a father, I refuse to believe that my daughter Jenna's values is 80% of that of her brothers. I love them equally, and I want them to be treated equally. Can we agree as Democrats and Republicans to work on a plan for pay equity in New Jersey, in our state, to lead the way for our nation? Can every young woman like Jenna in this state dream of a future where she will be treated as an equal to her brother? On behalf of my children, on behalf of our children, we will not turn back and we will do what is right. New Jersey will continue to lead the way on this issue until we make sure that the gender wage gap is the relic of history that it deserves. Finally, we have seen the terrible crisis of gun violence sweep our nation. Began in Columbine, saw it at Virginia Tech, Tucson, Aurora, Sandy Hook Elementary, Emanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church, the Pulse Nightclub, Sutherland Springs, Las Vegas. This list continues to grow. The names are seared into our consciousness. They represent schools and supermarkets, movie theaters, places of entertainment, houses of worship. More importantly, they represent families and communities that have been ripped apart, victims of senseless, unimaginable pain and needless suffering. They represent the failure of leaders to heed the warning of the victims and affect the necessary public policy. There are those who say that we cannot find common sense ways to reduce gun violence and save the lives in our community. There are those that say, as long as there is evil in this world, these mass shootings will continue. I would say to those people that we must face the inevitable political consequences to do what is right and not what is easy. This Bible, this is my parents' Bible. I've lost both of them. This was given to my mother in 1977. I keep this Bible on my desk in the majority office. And like many, like many legislators, we meet with constituents all the time. One of the most compelling moments in my 22 years in public life was when the families, the parents of Sandy Hook came to meet with me. They met with me in my office. They asked to pray over this Bible. And they handed me the pictures of their beautiful children. Remarkable children, children just like yours and mine. Class pictures, children playing in their Easter outfits or in their team uniform. You and I, we all have these pictures at home. And as the father of one of the children who lost their life in the shooting at Sandy Hook said to me, I used to come home from work and sit on my sofa and watch the news. And I would see these horrible tragedies of a shooting in a movie theater, and I'd say a quiet prayer, but I would then rush up to continue my life and take my son to soccer practice. He said, I will never do that again. He said, the greatest thing we can do to stop this violence, the single most important piece of legislation we can do is to limit the capacity of those magazine clips, not take the right away of a single gun owner, not infringe on a single amendment right, never tamper with the second amendment, but find common sense approaches so that no other family will suffer this pain. Gun violence is not about statistics or abstract arguments. It is about countless lives that have needlessly been cut short because far too many public policymakers have failed to find the courage to act. I made a promise to those parents 
I refuse to look those families in the eye and tell them that we are powerless, that their loved ones were a tragic but necessary loss. No loss to gun violence is ever necessary. We can do more and we will do more. New Jersey has led the way in the response to these awful tragedies, proposing historic gun safety reform legislation. Some of these efforts have become law in a bipartisan effort. That is an important thing to note. That is not happening around the country. That is not happening in Washington. It is happening here in New Jersey. Some of those laws, like strengthening mental health background checks, have become law. New Jersey must continue to lead the way in comprehensive background checks and safety training and public health research about gun violence and keeping firearms out of the hands of domestic abusers and in so much more. This package of bills provides the balance of the Second Amendment with common sense, rational approaches to stop this madness. Just yesterday, our legislature understood this. We passed legislation to ban bump stocks. Most of us never heard of bump stocks. Most of us had never heard of bump stocks until the tragedy in Las Vegas. But together, we reasoned that no one should be able to inflict that amount of carnage in that short period of time. We came together as a legislature and passed unanimously a bill that said enough is enough. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I don't think these goals are lofty. I think they're vital, and I know we can accomplish them. We cannot turn back. We have to go forward. I believe in the members of this delegation and their readiness to tackle the task at hand. And I believe in the people of New Jersey, who despite troubles in Washington, elected the most progressive, middle-class, focused legislature in New Jersey in decades. But I caution my friends in the Democratic Party this is not a mandate for one party over the other, but instead it is an opportunity. And it is an opportunity to listen, to listen to all the people and to make change for all of the people. We can do these things together. When it comes to public policy challenges, we must resolve to never take no for an answer and be committed to finding solutions to today's problems no matter where we find them. Change begins right here, not with sound bites or slogans, but with remarkable citizen legislators and even more remarkable men and women across this great state, the people that we serve and those that we're not afraid to dream. These challenges will not be easy to solve. They have existed for generations, but I refuse to believe that there is a problem that can't be solved by working together. I hope that you will accept this challenge. Thank you, God bless you, and may God continue to bless the great state of New Jersey. At this time, Assemblyman Coughlin will now administer the oath of office to Minority Leader to Assemblyman John Bramnick of Union County. Lose. I forgot ours. I do solemnly promise. I do solemnly promise. And swear. And swear. That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And justly perform. And justly perform. All the duties. All the duties. Of the office of minority leader. Of the office of minority leader. Of the New Jersey General Assembly. Of the New Jersey General Assembly. To the best of my abilities. To the best of my abilities. And understanding. And understanding. That I will carefully preserve. That I will carefully preserve. All records. All records. Papers. Papers. Writings. Writings. Or other property. Or other property. Entrusted to me for safekeeping. Entrusted to me for safekeeping. By virtue of my office. By er 
by virtue of my office and make such disposition and make such disposition of the same of the same as may be required as may be required by law by law that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to same. And to the governments established. And to the governments established. In the United States. In the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, congratulations to you. I look forward to working with you. Uh, you're a man of high character and integrity, and I look forward to our friendship over the next two years. Mr. Majority Leader, Assembly Conference Leader Bucco, Nancy Munoz, our whip, distinguished guests, and I saw Governor McGreevy here as well, and fellow citizens in New Jersey. I look forward to working with the majority in the State Assembly. And I intend to seek, thank you. And I intend to seek common ground. But we are the minority, and we intend to speak clearly and loudly and respectively regarding policies that affect this state. And there are many. We are aware that one party rule, whether in Washington or in New Jersey, can be extreme at times. And I submit that most people in the state of New Jersey are in the middle of the political spectrum. That most of you want us to be moderate and reasonable. In that vein, I would hope that all 80 members of this body would continue to enact serious fiscal reforms that are desperately needed to reduce our property taxes and reforms that would make New Jersey more competitive. And we have made some progress during the past eight years. And we've done that on a bipartisan basis, but much more work needs to be done. And these reforms will be painful, but they are necessary for the survival of this state. And look at some of the creative legislative ideas by Assemblyman DeMeo, Assemblyman Weber, uh, Assemblywoman DeCroix, the affordable housing plans of Assemblywoman Shapizi, and tax reduction ideas by Assemblywoman Hanlon. Now on a separate issue, I speak for myself, and it is clear that Americans and New Jerseyans are frustrated with government. The process of government can be slow, cumbersome, and many times less than adequate. Yet, this should not lead us to attack the very institutions that have sustained democracy for hundreds of years. The frustration has led to vicious personal attacks that are not worthy of the American democracy or our history as a nation. Tweets that hurl insults at each other do not solve complicated issues that face our state or our nation. And I <laughs> We are the New Jersey Republicans, and we will stand up for the people of this state, but we will do so in a civil, respectful, and serious manner. And those so-called journalists on cable television or on the radio who despise both Republicans and de Democrats, I've got a message for them. Stop chasing ratings and start searching for the facts. And to you, and to you as one individual, 
who is responding to a post on social media and you do so with a vile, bitter, venomous and hateful attack, I suggest you get some psychological help to find out what happened when you were growing up. We have reached an important moment in our history. The reasonable and rational people of this state and this country must, must stand together and condemn bad behavior. And whether that bad behavior comes from the left-wing media or directly from the White House, we need to stand together and speak out as one against that kind of behavior. We, the rational majority, must be louder and stronger. And we must not allow others to air their personal baggage to bring down our institutions that have been so important to the growth of our democracy. Let's stick together and fight those issues that have affected people in New Jersey. In New Jersey, we have some attitude and maybe we should use that attitude. That attitude that we have should fight against intolerance, injustice, and bitterness. And today is the day to start to act reasonable and civil to each other in our country. <clears throat> Starting tomorrow, I intend to travel this state and rally the rational. Reach out to the reasonable and I know you're out there. Whether you're Republican, Democrat, or Independent, I know you're out there. And I will find you and ask you to join with me, Republicans and Democrats, and work together, both majority and minority, as one people, one state, and one nation. God bless America. Thank you, Assemblyman. Nominations are now in order for the Speaker of the New Jersey General Assembly. I recognize Assemblyman Gordon Johnson of Bergen County. I rise to place in the nomination the name of a true friend, our esteemed colleague, to be Speaker of the 218th New Jersey General Assembly, the Honorable Craig Kaufman of the 19th Legislative District. Assemblywoman Pinkham, why do you rise? I rise to second the nomination. If there are no other nominations, the chair will entertain a motion that nominations be closed. Assemblywoman McCurgy, why do you rise? I move that nominations for Speaker of General Assembly be closed. Hearing no objections, so ordered. All those in favor of the nomination of Assemblyman Coughlin as Speaker signify by saying aye, aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Congratulations, Speaker Coughlin. This time, the Honorable Barry Albin, Justice of the New Jersey Supreme Court, will administer the oath of office of Speaker of the New Jersey Assembly to Speaker Craig Coughlin.
you guys to drop by. And if you say I, you'll repeat your name. Okay. okay. I, I, Craig Coughlin, do solemnly promise and do, swear. Do solemnly promise and swear that I will faithfully. That I will faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly, and justly perform all the duties, perform all the duties of the office of speaker, of the office of speaker of the New Jersey General Assembly, of the New Jersey General Assembly, to the best of my ability and understanding, to the best of my ability and understanding, that I will carefully, that I will carefully preserve all records, preserve all records, papers, writings, or property, papers, writings, or property. Entrusted to me, entrusted to me, for safekeeping by vir virtue of my office, for safekeeping by virtue of my office, and make such disposition, and make such disposition of the same as may be required by law, of the same as may be required by law, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and that I will bear, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, true faith and allegiance to the same, and to the governments established in the to, United States, and to the governments established in the United States, and in this state, and in this state, under the authority of the people, under the authority of the people. So help me God. So help me God. We got that out of the way. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you all. And thank you to my colleagues. Before I begin my remarks, I would like to mark the passing of one of New Jersey's all time greats, Governor Brendan Byrne. Brendan, Governor Byrne set the standard for integrity, for public service, and for bold thinking. We are a better place because of his service. Thank you, Governor Byrne. I'd like to thank uh, everyone who came out today. I, I saw my, my friends, Speaker Roberts and uh, Speaker Collins. Thank you both gentlemen for coming out. They were kind enough to have lunch with me the other day and give me some pointers. I appreciate that. My, my good friend, Senator, uh, Governor McGreevy, thank you very much for being here, Jim. Um, to everyone who made this, this program uh, special, uh, and it was uh, a very personal and special uh, thing for me. Uh, to the uh, South Amboy pipe and drum folks, thank you for being here. To the to the Woodbridge High School choir and band, you guys are the best. Thank you so much. To Arlette, and wasn't that some version of the national anthem? Holy smokes! And if you thought it was sounded familiar, it's because Arlette sings it for Devil's Games, so there you go. Uh, to Imam Hussein, thank you very much. Uh, to Justice uh, Albin, uh, whom I have known for years, uh, thank you very much, Justice, for coming and doing me the honor of swearing me in today. Um, to uh, Kevin Rina, uh, who did the invocation. Kevin has been my best friend since our first year in college, and I'm so proud that he could be here with me today. Thank you, Kevin. And to Eric Legrand, um, who is the most inspirational person I think I've ever met. You know, I had the, one of the things I, I've gotten to do uh, is to call, do the play-by-play -play for the local access channels in Woodbridge. I'm a frustrated sportscaster. Um, some say I'm better at that than being an assemblyman, I don't know. And, and those are my friends. Um, but Eric, uh, and I got to call his games when he was in high school, and he was the proverbial man playing against boys. Uh, he was the best linebacker, he was the best running back, uh, and it turns out he's the best person, because Eric has never thanked, yeah, give him a round of applause.
Um, he is, and his inspiration has never once uh, said, woe is me, and makes each of us who get to know him uh, better because of that. So Eric, thank you for being here today. Um, to everyone who thinks that government can't accomplish anything, no need to thank us for the 40 degree temperature. We passed the bill yesterday <laughs> requiring that to happen. Um, and to each of you, thank you for coming out today to open this 218th legislature and to begin the challenge of taking back the state of New Jersey for the middle class. I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate Governor-elect Murphy and the Assembly's very own Lieutenant Governor-elect Sheila Oliver. Congratulations to both of them. Also like to congratulate the members of the State Senate and Senate President Steve Sweeney. I wish each of them great success and I look forward to working with them as we move New Jersey forward. I'd also like to acknowledge Speaker Vincent Prieto. Speaker Prieto. Speaker, you led this body with class and dignity, and I thank you for your graciousness throughout this transition period. Thank you very much, Speaker. I'd also like to acknowledge Majority Leader Lou Greenwald and Minority Leader John Bramnick, two gentlemen whose opinion I respect greatly, and both of whom I look forward to working with over the next two years. John, Lou. I'd also like to thank the people who have supported me for years uh, and have helped make today possible. To my late mom, who, more than anyone, is most responsible for making me who I am or ever will be. To the best team around, Gary, Kevin, Artie, Lori, Scott, Dan, Dan, Dave, Lou, and Julie, thank you for your friendship and your hard work. To my, yeah, give them a round of applause. They work hard every day. <laughs> to my amazing extended family, all well, 150 of you are out here, <laughs> and the best family anyone could ever hope to have Craig, Vincent, and Nicholas, Kathy, Robin, and Melissa, and of course, my wife, Tish, who is nothing short of a force of nature. Together, you are an amazing foundation that has allowed me to stand here today, and I love you all very, very much. Now, most of you know that I have been a member of this esteemed body since 2010, representing the great people of the 19th Legislative District. There they are. I'll try to get you better seats next time. But beyond that, I suspect that you don't know very much about me. That is, unless, of course, you read the political blogs, in which case you know that I am low-key, relatively unknown, and a backbencher. <laughs> so you can see how I got the job. And I'll never be underestimated. But who I really am uh, is a guy who grew up in South Amboy, a proud... Yeah, a proud product of the public school system and the son of Jack, who passed away when I was four, and Claire Coughlin. It was a place where my sister Cindy and I were taught that if you were honest and you worked hard, you would succeed. That if you cared about your family and looked out for your neighbors, they would do the same. I grew up at a time when John F. Kennedy was the president. Our country's future was bright with idealism, and dreams of what would be. It was a time when public service was called a higher calling. And, that our, and while our nation's challenges were great, we believed we could fix them if we put our minds to it and work together. I still believe all of that is very true. But today, when I speak to people in my district, working class communities like Woodbridge and Sarahville, I'm saddened by how much faith people have lost in government. I'm taken aback 
by how many people have written us off as not being able or having the desire to help them in their daily anxieties. Too many people seem to believe that the system doesn't care about them. But I know that's not true. And I know that everyone here on this stage is here because we believe that we can make a difference. Each of us has something in our lives that has led us to run for office and to get involved. For me, it was election night 1968, Nixon versus Humphrey. As I recall, it was very late in the evening. I was watching the returns with my mom, and I asked her, who did we want to win? She explained her choice with an eloquence that was as understandable to her 10-year-old son then as it is profound to her 59-year-old son today. She said she chose her candidate because he cared about people like us. That simple statement, the basic notion of government helping people has been my inspiration ever since. I'm sure each of my 79 colleagues has an equally defining story. And that is why I know that each of us wants to make New Jersey a better place to live. And with that guiding principle, I come before you today to thank you, my colleagues, and offer congratulations to each of you. Congratulations on your victory, and thank you for your willingness to serve, take on the awesome responsibility of serving the people of this great state. It was Al Peroni, the former head of OLS, who at the end of my orientation, when I was first elected, brought home to me the enormity of the responsibilities that we have. He said, there are about nine million people in the state of New Jersey, 121 of them get to make the rules, and you are one of them. I think of those words today as I come before you to open this session of the legislature. The power bestowed upon us by our neighbors gives us an opportunity that most people never have. The power to bring about change and to tackle real problems. I'm not saying this is going to be easy. In fact, I'm telling you it's going to be very hard because the challenges New Jersey face are very real. But whether you live in Carteret or Carlstead, Patterson or Atlantic City, middle class residents and those aspiring to enter the middle class have the same concerns. New Jersey has gotten too expensive. College graduates worry that they can't find an affordable place to live even if they somehow find a job. Parents and seniors worry about being able to afford to stay here. Families worry about paying for college. Workers worry about a salary that can't pay the rent and what happens if they get sick or if they have to take a day off to care for a family member. Commuters worry about a mass transit system that can't reliably get them to work on time. Those challenges allow us to find our purpose. They allow us to define our legislative agenda in addressing the anxieties and the economic insecurities that simmer in the everyday lives of our constituents. Our work will speak for our priorities, and our work must focus on building a stronger system of opportunity and security for the middle class, while standing up for the least fortunate among us and encouraging great success. A quality public education, access to a good paying job, an affordable place to live, an equal wage for equal work, and a government that values their worries. This is what we should be focused on. Opportunity for the middle class begins with access to good education, and full funding of schools is a real property tax relief and an opportunity for middle-class mobility. We must also recognize that college isn't, a college education isn't necessary 
or appropriate for every student. In this state, and in others, high-skilled jobs cannot be filled because employers can't find workers with the right training. We must focus on job training and workforce development, which offers a path to middle-class mobility. We must also look for ways to make our state more vibrant. Applying science and technology to emerging industries is a source of jobs and an economic development for our state. That is why I've created a new committee on science, innovation, and technology to enable New Jersey to take advantage of our location and our tremendous human capital. At its core, government must be able to do the basics. Few things are as basic to government as a dependable transportation system. Right now, Workers cannot rely on our buses and trains to get them to and from work. Let's pledge ourselves and this body to do all we can to get the Gateway Tunnel built, to fix New Jersey Transit, and to get people to work on time. Let's also remember that while we tackle the big challenges, there are lots of little annoyances that seem to defy common sense and are maddening to our constituents. Too often, those are governmental actions that seem to have no purpose but to annoy people. Let's take a look at what annoying and pointless rules we can help eliminate. One more thing, something personal to me. I would like us to address and that is hunger. In this wealthy state, too many people go to bed hungry. In this wealthy state, too many communities don't have access to a supermarket. And in, and in this wealthy state, too many food banks that serve the least among us don't have enough support. We can and we will fix that. Every session of the legislature is important, and every session of the legislature offers us the opportunity to do right by our neighbors. But we are here at a unique time, when our fellow citizens need to see that government can help, that government can be a positive force for good in their lives. Now, I'm not wise enough, nor foolish enough, to think that I have all the answers. But I am humble enough to know that it takes all of us to make the assembly work. I want your priorities, and I want your opinions on the issues in front of us, because I recognize that each of you is a fierce advocate for your district. All voices in our chamber matter, whether Republican or Democrat, North, south or central, I will listen and respect each. I do, however, reserve the right to disagree. <laughs> now. now, I will always look for collaboration with the Senate and with the governor. But inevitably, there will be times when the assembly must set its own course and act as an independent and equal branch of government. I will not be afraid to chart that path when it's necessary. My overarching priority is to make sure that we get the policy right, and I can only do that with the help of each of you. In deciding to go to the moon, President Kennedy told the nation, we choose to go to the moon not because it is easy, but because it is hard. To my colleagues, let's do hard things, and let's do them together. Let's make the hallmark of the 218th Assembly that it was thorough and thoughtful, that it took on big challenges and wasn't afraid to be bold in its thinking or in the mountains it chose to scale. And when we do, we will honor the awesome responsibility and humbling trust that nine million New Jerseyans gave us when they chose us to be the ones who get to make the rules. 
Thank you for your trust and your confidence in allowing me to serve as speaker. Thank you all for coming. God bless you all, and God bless the great state of New Jersey. At this time, I'd like everyone to please remain standing. Imam Hussein of Voorhees Islamic Center in Cherry Hill will conclude our ceremonies with the benediction. Imam. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to begin by reading a passage from the Holy Quran. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قال رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي واجعل لي وزيرا من اهلي هارون اخي اشتد به ازري واشركه في امري كي نسبحك كثيرا ونذكرك كثيرا إنك كنت بنا بصيرا قال قد أوتيت سؤلك يا موسى Everyone here today, the passage I just read is an incident which took place between God and Moses. All of us are aware of who Moses is. Moses is not someone only specifically for the people of Islam. Moses is someone who is revered and cherished by the people of Islam. Judaism, of the people of Christianity, and the people of Islam. In this incident, Moses makes a prayer. He prays to God and he says, and this is when Moses is tasked with, the, with this responsibility of going over to the Pharaoh and to plead to the Pharaoh to let his people go, to stop treating his people with injustice and oppression. And when tasked with this great responsibility, Moses prays to God and he says, Rabbi shrah li sadri. Oh God, expand and enlighten my chest. Wa yassir li amri. Make easy for me my task. Wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. And remove the knots from my speech. Allow me to articulate clearly so that people may understand what I'm saying. Wa ja'anni waziran min ahli Harun akhi. And make my brother Aaron my support make him my support so that we can work together to call Pharaoh to your path to treat people with righteousness equality and justice and the passage ends off by saying that oh Moses we gave you what you asked for and today we ask that God give all of our legislative branch and everyone in office the power to do good, the power to seek the truth, the power to enact justice. And if we seek, then like Moses, we will get. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Speaker Coughlin, Majority Leader Greenwald, and all the members of the 218th New Jersey General Assembly, I want to thank you for joining us here today. God bless.